Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me, I have three individuals on the comfy couch who are here to talk about uh, one of the opening season's uh, events for Tacoma Symphony, Symphony Tacoma, which we love so much. Please join me in welcoming back the effervescent Sarah Ioannidis. You are the music director of Symphony Tacoma. Welcome, my dear. Thank you. Good to have you here. Okay, can we get a shot of these boots? Oh. Cheryl, can you? Get, oh, look at these boots. These boots are the best. You're like, well, it's cold outside. Well, yes, but most people don't have stylish boots like this when it's cold outside. Leave it to you. Um, you brought with you two fabulous young women. Um, Libby Pastiga, you are a Tacoma a school of the arts student mm -hmm. but you are also playing Romeo of Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I Welcome am. my dear. Thank you. Good to have you here. You brought with you your Juliet <laughs> which is Annabelle Daniel. You are also a Tacoma school of the yes. arts student. <laughs> Welcome, Annabelle. Thank you. Good to have all three of you on the couch this morning. Now, this is something new, and mm -hmm. I cannot wait to get into this. But mm -hmm. first off, this is the 73rd season, um, and it starts next week. Let's talk about some of the highlights before we get into the, the actual segment of this, Miss Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, this is uh, a really Big. exciting year for us. Uh, going into 2020, we're celebrating the Roaring Twenties with Charlie Albright, who's a big popular favorite mm -hmm. around here. Um, grew up in uh, Washington and he's coming back for Rhapsody in Blue and Gershwin, um, American in Paris we'll yes. do with that. So that will be a really exciting end. But also we've got things like uh, Beethoven and the Electric Universe. We've got a wonderful performer called George Lee, who's a rock star in the... Um, in the piano world internationally, who I performed with when he was about 13 years old. So wow. kind of an ongoing um, opportunity to play with him again with Rachman and Off. And we're just tying together some really exciting projects like we're performing with the Refugee Choir of yes. Tacoma at Christmas, as well as Tacoma Youth Chorus. And so we're really reaching out to uh, partnerships with, <laughs> for example, School of the Arts yes. as well. I love that. So 2020 is Beethoven's 250th birthday. Wow. Uh, is Symphony Tacoma doing anything special to celebrate those 250 yes, years? Yes, absolutely. And um, so I think for me, Beethoven's influence goes so far and beyond. We I agree. We picked great pieces of music that Beethoven was inf that influenced Beethoven, like Brahms and Mahler and all the great symphonic repertoire. So we're doing three key works by Beethoven, a symphony, an overture, and the choral fantasy with our Symphony Tacoma voices. But I think what's really special about this year is we're also using it as an opportunity to commission and celebrate a new composer David Ludwig with a residency and composers workshop with composers in the community which we're going to be launching uh, later in November we'll have a lot more information about this so we're commissioning we're doing new works but we're also doing Beethoven and we're tying it in with an electric uh, guitar concerto oh. Can't and some wait. multimedia screens in, in March and April will be really, really I love exciting. This. Yep. Obviously, Romeo and Juliet does not traditionally look like this, on the couch, <laughs> although I say it should. Um, tell us what's different, Sarah, about this performance and why we shouldn't miss it, and then we're going to get to know you too. <laughs> so, usually, you see Romeo and Juliet Shakespeare, right? Yes. In the theater. Right. Or you might go to. Um, the ballet, mm -hmm. see Prokofiev's ballet. Right. This way you get two in one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we've accepted the Shakespeare's play. Uh, we have five great actors from School of the Arts, including Gabe McPherson, their director. <gasps> we love Gabe. We do. <laughs> we, we so much do. And he's, um, um, we've basically weaved the music in with the drama. So you get an entire production beginning to end oh. of Romeo and Juliet. But the music is so powerful that we have to do mostly, and for the Symphony Tacoma, we're playing mostly the suites of Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet, but put them in the order of the ballet and then sandwiched the mm -hmm. acting the in between and actually sometimes overlaying their mm -hmm. scripts oh. with 
quieter moments of the music. You say it so calmly, and yet my breath is being taken away as you describe this whole choreography of this. Okay, Libby and Annabelle, first off, Libby, what grade are you in? Uh, I'm in 11th grade. I'm a junior. And Annabelle? I'm also in 11th grade. <laughs> okay, all right. So, and let's talk about... Um, this isn't the first time the two of you have played this part. Tell us about your role, Libby, and then your role, Annabelle. Well, I play Romeo, who's yes. um, a Montague, the house of Montague, yes. and he's just a lover. And that's what I really love about him, and just how much his, his heart is so big, and I just love playing him so much. Is this the first time you've played him? No, um, last year it was our fall show, and that was my first time playing this role. I love that. And so is that what draws you to play this role again? Yeah, just being him is just such an amazing opportunity. And just he goes through a whole lot throughout the show. And just having his emotional journey from just falling in love and then he kills someone, you know. Yeah, and all in love. It, yeah, all in love. And then he runs away and gives up his life for his love and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Annabelle, looking at you, um, you are too young to remember this, but uh, <laughs> Franco Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet, you look very much like that Juliet. Oh, I... That was on the screen. Have you seen that yeah, version? Is it, yeah, is it the one from the 60s? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I'm looking at you movie. going, wow, this is so <laughs> scary. Mm -hmm. So first off, is this your first time playing this role? No, we were in that fall production last year together. So there's already some established chemistry mm -hmm. for that production, which yes. is different from this production. Mm -hmm. So what drew you to this role last time? I mean... For starters, it's just, it's such an honor to be able to even play this role, especially so young. Like, I was, I was a sophomore, and in our school, you can't even do theater until you're a sophomore. So we were both just, like, fresh out of freshman year, and we were like, oh my gosh, Romeo and Juliet. Like, we were so shocked. But it's such an honor to play her. And also, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about her. A lot of people kind of see her as naive and, you know, not not very smart, she throws everything away for a guy, but I really see her as a very like intelligent person and she's really just frustrated with this world that she's been born into, with mm -hmm. the whole rivalry between the Capulets and the Montagues, and I really, I value her as a character and I really enjoy playing her. What a beautiful, fresh perspective that you bring to that role, and it's so of your generation mm -hmm. to be uh, to take a role uh, of what Shakespeare wrote, and to and these are my words to put a fierce feminist spin on it. <laughs> Way Thank to you. go, Thank sister! You. So let's talk about what is different about playing your parts with the symphony, because this is not the same kind of staging. So no. Libby, um, yeah, it's. It's really different having to say something like with the music. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like how I used to say my line. I had to like rethink it, like still get the same message across, but now I have to like do it in timing with the music, which it adds a whole new element. Which, it's a musical now. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, it's very different, but I love what it adds to the Shakespeare, and it, it's awesome. <laughs> what would you add to that, Annabelle? Um... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's it adds a whole new experience for the audience, too. I mean, yes. it just makes everything so much bigger with all of that 90-piece orchestra behind us. Like, And, I'm, I mean, yeah, I have to slow down a lot of things because there's a lot of frantic moments in this show, right? It's a really intense piece, but sometimes when the music is slower, I still have to be, like, methodical about the way that I'm talking, even right. though I'm spinning out of control. <laughs> so it's it's different. I have to change a lot of my lines. I would imagine you do, because you are in tandem, like a like an Argentine tango mm -hmm. with the orchestra, mm -hmm. and so you have to be able to read each other and yet still stay in the moment and let that nuance pass through you into the audience. Boy, don't wait for Carnegie Hall. You two are already there. <laughs> they're amazing. Sarah, um, how do people get tickets? Because I, I hope they're still available. Yes, we do have some tickets available. Uh, go to Symphony Tacoma uh, website yes. or call the box office and I think you have the numbers. And We do. Um, I don't know if we can hear you have them say a line or can you give us something? can you give us a little duet here? <laughs> all right I think that would just be so fun i think to so too hear the shakespeare all right okay um, i guess do a little bit from the um pilgrim scene it's right as they meet yes uh 
at the the ball, and this is the first time they they gaze on each other. <laughs> If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which manly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands which pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? I pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou, lest faith be turned to despair. Saints do not move, though. Grant for prayer's sake. Then move not. While my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips, by thine, my sin is purged. Oh. <laughs> Brava! That's what I want to say. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, the music comes in. Yes. Yeah, it's like a very powerful piece, just that. the first kiss. Oh my gosh. All right, Miss Sarah, last 30 seconds. Who do we need to thank? Oh, we have such uh, thanks to go to our sponsors, Multicare, yes. Pacific Northwest Eye Associates. Uh, it's also Tacoma Arts Month. And yes. of course, Gordon Thomas Honeywell is always amazingly supportive to us, so we'd like to thank them as well. And thank you for giving us a chance to show everybody <laughs> what, what we've got coming next Saturday. I, I'm really I... excited about it. My pleasure. I want to say thank you to the three of you and to your teachers, to the rest of the symphony, to anybody who touched this. What a beautiful gift to Tacoma. And uh, I will be there cheering you on. So thank, oh, thank, you, thank you. you so much. Break thank a leg, so much. right? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. When we come back after just a little bit of Tacoma Symphony musical chairs, we'll have the Crystal Justin Family Justice Center here in the house. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.